Welcome back to the channel today, guys. We are packing our backpacks for one last trip of the season. We are headed out in the Eastern Sierra for two nights and it's going to be very cold. It might be more of a winter trip than a fall trip. So we're packing accordingly. Luckily, we've been prepared by Canada. We have been using pretty much the same gear all season. We've gotten our packing down. We love this gear. Honestly, I doubt any of it's gonna change in 2024. But we could stick with everything and be like totally happy. So we'll show you what we're bringing. To start with our backpacks, on this trip, I'm bringing the Osprey Stratos 50. This has become one of my favorite packs. I've been using Osprey pretty much the entire time I've been backpacking. And then I was able to just downsize as I've gotten better at packing. This pack is super comfortable, it's pretty simple, but I love her. <laughs> and I'll be bringing the Talon 44. I've come to use this for absolutely every trip at this point. Mountaineering, backpacking, uh, just big enough to carry everything I need and small enough to keep me from packing things I don't. It's incredibly simple, one main pocket, two zipper pockets on the lid, and that's all I need. I genuinely don't know how he fits everything in there, but he does. <laughs> Moving on from the backpacks, we'll show you what our sleeping system is. We have both been using the REI Magma 15s all season and... With these incredibly old stuff sacks. Yeah, they probably get a lot smaller than this. We just need to get better stuff sacks, but they pack down crazy well for such a low temperature rating. Best of all, the men's and the women's zip together, which is great. They stay super warm. I like will sweat and if there's snow on the ground sometimes, so they can be overkill, but for this trip, they're gonna be great. So the conclusion we've come to is that we like packing our sleeping bags and sleep system if it all fits at the very bottom of the pack. Kind of sticking to the rule of light on the bottom, light on top, heavier in the middle, and medium heavy middle to the outside. My pack has a separate bottom pocket, so I just always put my sleep system down here. Kelby's can, it's just all the way through, so we can access it from the bottom or from the top. It's always a little bit of a squeeze to get it in here though. I usually have to put hers in here. I've gotten better. <laughs> she said she's gotten better. It's going. These zippers are amazing. I don't know how they don't break. Next up, sleeping pads. The Nemo Tensor is by far the best sleeping pad either of us have ever owned. We Our love favorite. this. Cannot recommend that sleeping pad enough. It's so thick, so cushiony. They have been super durable. <laughs> However, on our last trip, mine started losing air. And I have not patched it yet. I'm sure it's gonna be a super simple fix, but I've been lazy. It was supposed to be end of the season, so we didn't know we were doing another trip. Yeah, so I'm bringing the Xbed Ultra 3R. I've used this once before. It's super comfortable. Not as comfortable as that one, but still a really good sleeping pad. Good to have backups. And then with these, because it's going to be such a cold trip, we're actually bringing a second sleeping pad for each of us. So this will go on the ground and then this sleeping pad on top. And that allows you to stack the R values. So the combination of an R value of 2 and an R value of 4.2 gets you a much higher R value, keeps you a lot warmer. This is your only insulation for the most part on the bottom because when you're sleeping in your sleeping bag, you compress the insulation of the sleeping bag and that it just doesn't work. It requires that airspace in the sleeping bag in the down. So I end up putting this in my backpack as close to my sleeping bag as possible and I'll try and kind of like shove it down next to it just to make extra space. I usually pack this with the bottom closed, but I can show you kind of where, where we're talking about both of our sleeping pads go right there next to our sleeping bags. But your pillow goes right next to it as well. Yeah, and then these we will show you are going to get packed on the outside of our packs because there's no way this is fitting inside. So Zoe is so kind and got me the X-Ped Mega Pillow, kind of. Let me just, okay, I think these are worth pulling out to show you the difference in these. So I have the Nemo Pillow pillow, and I thought it was great until he got this one. And now I'm just, I'm really jealous. Look at this. <laughs> and his is like, it's super thick. Yeah. She ends up sleeping on it with me. Yeah, I like move over until I get a little part of it. That pillow is so nice. And then I am carrying the tent. This is the Big Agnes Copper Spur two person tent. It is wonderful. We've been using it for the last year. We love it. Instead of packing it in the bag, We'll pull everything out and pack it separately. So we'll do the rain fly. Oh. So that's pretty good. And the rest 
rest of the tent. And then stakes, the ground fly, I'm gonna also put inside here, pretty much wherever there's space. And then I'm just gonna put the stakes actually outside in my water bottle holder right here. And then this strap can go around it to keep it in place. So moving on now from the bottom of the pack, I'm gonna close this up and get into the majority of the food. So our trade-off is one person carries the bear canister, one person carries the tent and the cook system. The person with the bear canister loses weight each day. Starts heavier, but ends up with a much lighter pack. So we're actually swapping those rolls this time, and I'm curious to see if I'm gonna hate or love carrying the tent. <laughs> Inside of there right now, we have all of the food for the trip, aside from the first day's food. It also has like toiletries, toothbrush, toothpaste, things like that that we won't need access to until we're at camp. And then I'm carrying the cook system this time, and what we've been using a lot this year is the Jetboil Stash. Tiny, it's super light, and just have a small little burner here and a pot with a lid and it has the classic jet boil fins here so that it boils really fast. In addition to that, this may seem a little bit excessive to some people in that we're bringing two pots, but this pot we're gonna use for boiling water, for coffee, hot chocolate, things like that. This pot, most of the meals that we're doing like our ramen, mashed potatoes, things that need a pot to be cooked in and this little tiny pot cannot fit ramen for two people. So we're bringing both. This is the Sea to Summit Alpha Pot 2.2. And then, so that the jet boil doesn't scratch it, I'm gonna put a buff in here, put the jet boil in. And then I'm also just gonna put some of my socks in to fill the space, yum. And then that's completely full and using up all the space I can. And that's just gonna go in the center, like right up against my back. It's the end of the season and we haven't gone through full canisters or gotten the adapter to actually fill off the big canister. So we're gonna take up a little bit more space on this trip, but we need quite a bit of fuel because chances are we're gonna be melting a little bit of snow and boiling quite cold water. So it's actually gonna go through a lot of fuel. I drink a lot of hot chocolate. Yes, she does. <laughs> I will be carrying our first aid kit. We've always just made our own, but we just recently got like one of the pre-made ones from REI because it's super simple and we know we have everything in here. So going to put that in here and a bathroom kit. The most exciting part. In here we have a lightweight trowel. There's not much to say about it. It's a shovel, toilet paper. And then we either will bring Ziploc bags or dog bags are great for packing out your toilet paper and a dry bag so that you don't have to see any of it. Or smell any. So you can put it all in here and pack it out and not worry about it. Always carry a wag bag or two for just in case. On this trip, we're allowed to bury the waste, but on a lot of trips that we go on, you have to always pack wag bags. Or if you're up in like the high Sierra where you're above 10,000 feet and it's all rock and there's nowhere that you could dig, these are super important to have. And a hand sanitizer. So on this trip, we're in the Eastern Sierra. It's been snowing recently. Micro spikes are a good idea to have, but we're also planning on climbing Mount Darwin, which is about 13,830 feet. So we're gonna bring micro spikes. We don't really think we're gonna need full crampons for this trip, but micro spikes and an ice ax at this time are kind of what are on our list. Next is clothing. And we're bringing a lot of it because we don't want to be cold. Honestly, we might see below 10 degrees at some point. Yeah, trying to stay warm. I'm going to be hiking in a pair of hiking pants, a long sleeve, and then probably like a mid-layer lightweight lease. I'll be wearing some soft shell pants, some regular like thin athletic socks, a long sleeve, and probably my Melly is usually my go-to. So I got like an Under Armour long sleeve shirt as a good base layer. So this and I'm bringing a pair of leggings. I will also bring some long johns. And these pretty much just get stuffed wherever they fit. And I'm gonna bring uh, one extra pair of underwear, a, a good thick pair of socks to either sleep in or hang out at camp at night. Then we're both uh, gonna be matching in our mallies. We didn't run this by each other before we packed. And then we're each bringing an insulated layer. These are both puffies by Black Diamond that are so nice, they pack down really small, they're super warm. 
And then always bring a waterproof layer. I have this one from REI that's pretty heavy duty. Mine is also REI, but hers is a ski shell, mine is a rain shell. Yeah, my rain shell doesn't fit over my puppy, so I'm bringing the big one this time. To go along with all the cold weather gear, I feel like some obvious ones, beanie, gloves, I bring buff because I hate when my neck is cold. When we go to climb the mountain, we're gonna be dropping the big packs off just like at the bottom wherever we wanna set up camp. And we're gonna bring little pack to take up the mountain with us for food, snacks, all of that. So these are the REI Flash 18s. They're super packable and good for this kind of thing. I s where did that even go? It didn't even, what? It's in my mug because it's heavy. Oh, I made the entire song. You're, why am I carrying your socks? <laughs> She's trying to pawn off her socks. It's because she knows I'm a more efficient packer than she is. Hers is a 50 liter, mine's a 44. We're gonna see who, whose comes and out better. you're carrying the bear canister, I don't understand. We have all of the first day's food out of the bear canister because this should all get eaten and will not fit in the bear canister. So we have to eat it. So I'm just gonna put that in here. We're bringing some ramen, rice, potatoes. <laughs> and then since she's carrying that, I'm gonna add the first day snacks on top of my pack. Easy to get to. We'll probably put some in lids or hip pockets, but a few of the snacks, like the good old peachos, can go right on top. I'm so, I've been like, I bought those yesterday and I've just been staring at them wanting to eat them. <laughs> and then last thing to fill space in the main pocket are gonna be our mugs. Yeah. Okay, is that it for your main pocket? Uh, no, my sit back goes in my main pocket. I can't fit my sit pad in here. So we decided that we're going with the foam sit pads rather than backpacking chairs. We like I our mean, sit pads. I mean, a chair is definitely more comfortable, but these are super lightweight. They don't really take up much space. They cost significantly less. 20 bucks. <laughs> Put all my weight into it. These make a big difference in being able to cinch the weight to your body. So it's not feeling like you're top heavy. So just buckle these and cinch and down. Depends. That makes a big difference, like how much that cinches. So now we'll get into what goes, what I put in my lid. In the mesh part of the lid, I put things that I'm gonna use throughout the day. So water bag and water filter. And then we're gonna have hot lunches on this trip. So I will keep the spoon handy rather than in the bear canister for just the night and breakfast. These are the Sea to Summit Alpha Spoons, super basic. They're sporks. Alpha sporks. And then I'm bringing the Sawyer Squeeze water filter and these knock three liter water bags are the best thing. Cannot recommend them enough. They screw right onto the filter. I am also bringing hand warmers because it's gonna be very cold and I can guarantee that everyone's gonna want these. Then if we flip those over. There's another pocket. So in the top pocket of mine, I always have paracord. It can get you out of a lot of sticky situations or fix a lot of things. It's it's a lifesaver. He loves paracord. So in my top pocket, I'm gonna do sunscreen, sunglasses, I have a lighter, and headlamp. Moving on to the most underutilized part of backpacks, in our opinion. The hip pockets. So for me, I keep a multi-tool and a lighter in my hip pockets, easy to grab all the time. For me, I always have chapstick and snack because it, then I don't have to stop hiking. So I'm doing a peanut butter, we're both doing peanut butter. And then I'll probably put my phone in the other one and any trash. On the shoulder strap, uh, our Garmin inReach, I always just hook it right here. Quick access, easy to get to, ready to go. All that's left is stuff on the outside. Okay, a few things that go on the outside of our pack. Neither of us are bringing water bladders this time and we are both bringing hard side hydrations. It is a Nalgene and a water bladder in one. So it has a different top with a straw so you can drink out of it like a bladder while you're hiking, but it's in a bottle so it's super easy to refill. I'm super excited to use it. I always have my Kula cloth. It's a reusable pea cloth. Makes going to that country way better. Touched on these before, but now we're showing you where they go. So 
There is usually straps on the outside of your backpack at the bottom. Uh, some people use them for their tent. We use them almost primarily for our foam sleeping pads when we're bringing them along. The final addition to the outside of our packs is going to be our ice tool for this trip. We will be crossing a glacier and there will be some mixed class three in there. So this is a necessity for this trip. And these go. Both of these packs have gear loops right here. And so these are great for trekking poles or for ice tools to secure the gear. And then up here, there's a little elastic. And last but not least, trekking, trekking poles. poles. Obviously we'll be hiking with these quite a bit, but we do want to find a way to put them on the packs when we're not hiking. Kelby's backpack has gear loops on both sides. Both sides. Mine does not. So I'm going to put them in my bottle holder. I'm going to put mine in my gear loop. That is everything that we are packing in our backpacks. We do have a full gear list down below in the caption, as well as a whole backpacking checklist on our website. It'll all be linked below. If you like these types of videos or want to see more from our channel, please like and subscribe. It really helps out a lot. And let us know if you have any questions about gear, and we'll see you on the next one. Oh, God. I get I get chilly. I want to be cold.